Let's talk about the 2012 South Delhi Indian bus rape, where six men raped a woman, but they were not satisfied with just raping her. No, they felt they had a need to teach her a lesson. My brother, Tom Singh, had done such things before, but this time his intention was not to rape or fight. He had the right to explain to them. He asked the boy why he was out with a girl so late. There was fighting, beating. Those who raped, raped. He thought that if we did wrong things with them, they wouldn't tell anyone. Out of shame, they'd learn a lesson. These men were angry men. They were also normal men, not monsters. But what they did was like the work of the worst monsters we have ever been haunted by in our nightmares. But these six men, after they had had their way with her and raped her, decided that that wasn't good enough, that they had to take a tire iron, a deadly cold metal object, and take that object and ram it into her vagina, destroying it. They rammed that tire iron into her over and over and over again, violently, all in the name of teaching her a lesson. They rammed that tire iron into her so many times that it actually led to a hole in her abdomen from which her intestines started to protrude out of. Now, if you think that wasn't enough, if you think they would just stop there and say, oh my God, this is, this has gone too far. We've made a hole in her stomach via her vagina. One of the rapists, he was a juvenile, jumped in to level it up, to bring it to the next stage, where he started to grab the intestines and pull and pull and pull until 95% of her intestines were now outside her body. This wasn't about sex. This was about something wrong and diseased about society, especially the Indian society. Why and what drives a man or these six men to do this? But this is, this is happening throughout India. Women are getting burned, acid attacks, tortured, raped for days, left for dead, endless acts that seem to be sexually motivated, but I don't think so. But these men also visit prostitutes. So that night, it wasn't about just, that night was about sending a message to women that they are nothing, that they are filth, and that men can do whatever they want with them. There will be no repercussions. One of them admitted on camera during a documentary that if she had only complied and not fought back,
This is India. Many now think that we solved the problem. We hung these men in 2020, but we did not kill the monster and now can go and rest easy. For these monsters are everywhere, born every day, because India gives birth to them. Indian culture, Indian society. Just listen to these words of the defense lawyers, A.P. Singh and Sharma, and listen to what they have to say. These are educated men. These are lawyers. These are the men that represent the legal system of India that make the laws. If these men speak like this, what can you expect of the poor, the uneducated, the disenfranchised? If they are the monsters, these are the monster makers. Women's means uh, I immediately put the sex in his eyes. We have the best culture. In our culture, there is no place for a woman. Our national capital has been called India's rape capital. This is my stand. I'm still today's stand on that reply. And what about the police when this raped and disemboweled woman was lying on the road dying 95 percent of her intestines spewed all over the road because chucked off the moving bus she fell and her intestines kept dragging and stretching out along the road so when the police finally arrived instead of immediately calling for help an ambulance they waited 45 minutes debating about whose jurisdiction it was for cops had come from different areas and they began to argue well her body is in one jurisdiction, but her intestines is now all over the place to where it is actually in another jurisdiction. This is India. Don't for one second believe that the problem has gone away. The problem is India. The problem is the culture. And the problem is manifesting every day with new monsters waiting to continue to do horrendous, horrific, disgusting, despicable acts to women. Do not forget this. At 2.30 this afternoon, unemployed Mukesh Singh, bus cleaner Akshay Thakur, gym instructor Vinay Sharma and fruit seller Pawan Gupta were sentenced to death. The most vicious of the rapists, whose hands did most of the disemboweling, received only three years in a detention center because he was a juvenile. He spent most of his time painting, cooking, sewing, attending classes, and playing volleyball. How lovely for him. One of his paintings won a prize at a competition. He was quite anxious, but also hopeful the day he went to receive the prize. If he changes, the world will be ready to accept him, said the superintendent. There is no trace of anger in him, said his psychologist, who worked with him during their art-based therapy sessions. He is certainly putting an extra effort to become acceptable to others. She said, he takes a lot of pride in his paintings and prefers to watch movies, songs, and soap operas on TV. 
He appears to be fond of the pigeons that fly into the courtyard and is able to recognize some of them. He also is learning to speak short sentences in English, like, this is my painting and I cooked something new today. Officials say he is a quick learner and smart and that he operates with his head, not his heart. I wonder what he was operating with on the day he disemboweled that woman. His psychotherapist has this to say. He avoids talking about the incident. Maybe he's still in denial mode. He has never accepted his guilt, nor has he expressed remorse either. Meanwhile, he seems to be charming officials with his conduct and cuisine. In 2015, he was released. The government gave him 10,000 rupees cash and a sewing machine so that he could rent a tailoring shop. But in 2017, reports peg him as working as a cook. And where is he now? We have no idea. Enjoying a carefree life, I guess. ये तो मेरा प्रियांशु जो लड़का है अभी बच्चा है इसको क्या समझ में है इसे भी गला घोट देंगे और क्या करेंगे